to do. Go to work? No, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I like I buy that one right away. Well, there's another one too. You have to sell. You have to sell. So I have people that come in. I had a lady come in that had a $15 million a year construction company. And she said to me, I, we're, we're down to $5 million and we're going down. My husband died a few years ago. I'm trying to build the business. Uh, and we did a sales analysis of what she was doing. And what we determined is she used to be out there 10, 20, 30 times a week. She wasn't even out there one time a week. Her sales had gone down because she wasn't out there. We've proven the ratio is that for every 100 phone calls you make to sell for your business, you're going to get 20 potential people you can talk with. Most likely, you're eventually going to get down to about five. And of the five that really want to see you, and by the way, that was after your 10th attempt, not your first attempt. Because we live in a world of voicemail, don't we? Right, that's what it is. It's very painful. Um, and then after they go and they get, okay, I'm going to get to that very first attempt, you're going to probably sell one person out of 100. So when you're trying to sell, it's really tough. But if you're going to analyze your market and who you're going to go after, you have to have a high-powered database. The integrity of a high-powered database is critical. So... If you look here at InfoUSA, Dun & Bradstreet, and Hard Hanks, those are sources that sell databases. And the intent of a database is to help you to define your market and your target. You say, well, isn't there some free databases, and isn't there the Census Bureau? Yes, but the ones that are really scrubbed down so you can go find it, and then, of course, agreeing with me, and he knows. <laughs> You've had the experience. We've all had it. The scrubbed down databases where you pay hard money to go and go see something, and go get somebody and go talk to somebody are very expensive. So they could be anything from a dollar a record to 50 cents a record to 20 cents a record. But in order to be successful, you either have to buy the database or have somebody that's going to give you a database. It all begins with the integrity. Now, why do you think successful salespeople are successful? They have spent years cultivating databases. They have what they call the Golden Rolodex, okay, the Golden Rolodex. The Golden Rolodex says, I have a list of people. I'll give you a good example. Um, I was in Seattle. I lived on an island for a year. I was hired by a company to make 5,000, actually 8,000 phone calls. That's a very painful project. I'd get up every morning. I'd go down to the water. I was on Gig Harbor near Tacoma, Washington. If anybody knows Tacoma, this is a beautiful place in the world. I'd go back to the house, and I'd make phone calls, and... At the end of a year, I'd made 8,000 phone calls, all right? How many people do you think I really talked to at the end of a year? And I was paid good money to do it, and I'll never do it again, but it was, it was an interesting project. I talked to 5,000 people. And of the, excuse me, of the 5,000 people, 1,000 said, I want to know you better and transact. When I came back to St. Louis, I took that 1,000-name database. I went to work for another company that said, I need you for one year. We want to grow the company from a half million to a million and we want, to, we want to go out, and then we want to sell the company. And that's exactly what we did. I took my 1,000-name database. I had business at the White House, you know, President Bush's phone. I, it was a phone business is what it was. And I was over there in USC, and I was at Coach, and I was at uh, West Point. I had 1,000 names, which I still own to this day. It's like what I call the golden Rolodex. But I have a contact at 1,000 places, and within 12 months, I had grown the company from 500000 to a million and got them sold and moved on to the next project. The whole idea was the, the integrity of the database. But it wasn't so much what people sold me. It was what the phone calls I made and the contacts I made and the people that I found that made it very profitable for me. So I've had the pain and I've done the deal. Okay. Here's something that I do on a radio, I did it on uh, Camel X, and I really recommend you seriously think about this. I, um, I gave up on the Christmas card, holiday card deal a long time ago, and I made a conscious decision that I was going to start sending people anniversary, business anniversary cards. I really recommend you give that some thought. It's a very clever way to, do, to get business done. People like to know that you know them, and that you remember them, and that you want to do business with them. And so every year, when the date you first started doing business, send them a business anniversary card. Say, hey, you know, I'm so happy we've been doing business for a year. I want to thank you for the business. The other a point that we miss in marketing is appreciating the client we already have and maturing that business forward. So stop thinking of Christmas cards and all the other things. But start th if you are doing Christmas cards, don't give them up. I don't mean you should give them up. But think about anniversary cards. Think about other things like that that set you apart from the pack. 
in this day, in this economy, if you want to succeed, you're going to have to be sharper on your feet. You're going to be in guerrilla warfare. You're going to have to outdistance the competition. You're going to have to differentiate yourself. You're going to have to say things that other people don't say. You're going to have to look different. And that looking different is going to make you successful. It's going to make you very successful. I'm sure you can think of